start tonight's session. This is the second part of our session on the topic burnout. And uh, we will look into the how or in the more practical aspect of this issue. The last time we discussed about the what and the why. And uh, to start with, uh, let us see our slides. Okay, thank you. So, next slide, please. The last time we defined what burnout is all about. And according to the American Psychological Association, it describes as a physical, emotional, or mental exhaustion accompanied by decreased decrease motivation, lower performance, and negative attitudes towards oneself and others. So these are the, uh, descript uh, this is the description of what burnout is all about according to the Psychological Association of the United States. And we showed again last time uh, some statistics to show uh, the intensity or the extent of burnout, especially in the United States. And according to statistics, 80% uh, of students say, say that studies are one major source of stress, meaning uh, in their studies, it creates much stress upon uh, young students or college students at least, especially during this pandemic uh, period of ours. And here, I would like to uh, I would like to remind each one that this is exactly the culture that we are in, it's despite the fact that there there is advancement in technology and in, in various aspects of man's life. This advancement has even brought more woes to people rather than easing or lessening lessening the stress from each one of us and. Again, we are in this kind of culture, a, burn, a burnout culture that we are in. Now, the materials that I will be sharing tonight basically came from the book written by Dr. David Murray entitled Reset, Living in a Graced, a graced uh, Paced Life in a Burnout Culture. So this is basically the material that I'm, I'll be, I will be using for tonight's discussion to help us understand the how or the practical side of addressing such a uh, topic, a topic that not only students go through, but even adults, even professionals, and for all across society, everyone happens to uh, experience this in various levels. So here, uh, our objective for tonight is to present a guide if you are presently in a situation in a burnout state, then perhaps we can provide help in your present situation. But if you are, and if you are nearing towards that situation of being burnt out, uh, perhaps we can provide caution on your part so that you will not fall into such deep mess. And for those who are not yet there, I hope that this will guard or warn, warn you so that you will not be in a such uh, condition uh, in the future. So we will have a three, this will be a three part discussion. Firstly, we will be discussing about evaluation. Second, which is the meat of our discussion tonight, will be the solution or the practical ways of uh, dealing with it. And finally, we will end with a conclusion. So let's start first in the evaluation aspect. So in the evaluation part, we will have to look into the real, we will have to check the reality of our situation and review it. Where are we right now or how are we doing in our lives so that we can understand whether we are in a, in a burnt out state or not. So we will look into six areas and see for ourselves those perhaps uh, symptoms or uh, situations that we are in, whether we are in a burnout state or not. Firstly, there, there is the physical cat category. According to studies, 77% in the US, 77% experience 
physical symptoms of burnout. And this includes headache, ulcers, breathlessness, even bad skin, chest pains, palpitation, and other symptoms which are physically uh, which are physically manifested in the individual. And there is another another aspect is the mental. When we speak of mental, it is the perhaps the lack of concentration or one is easily distracted. And here the brain feels tired and, and uh, perhaps hypercritical hyper situation or cynical mind of a person. The next one is emotional, feeling of hopelessness or worthless and uh, perhaps feeling sad and bouts of weeping. There is extreme worry and anxiety or even forgetfulness of the very things that you used to remember. Fourth, we have the relational aspect. And in, in the relational aspect, you tend to avoid social occasions and the person becomes irritable. Fifthly, on the, on the vocational level, there is little joy experience in work or even in one study if you're a student. And so uh, you regularly, perhaps your work or your studies regularly spill into the evenings or even uh, weekends. So this is the situation that you are in perhaps. And lastly, the moral and spiritual, you medicate yourself or perhaps ease your conscience by overspending, overeating, over drinking, and perhaps skipping church and the various uh, personal disciplines that you used to do or that you should be doing like prayer, meditation, fellowship, and the like. So these are the, these are the areas which you need to assess yourself. Uh, and you have to evaluate the warning lights that you might be experiencing or seeing if you honestly uh, reflect on this. And so knowing this, understanding your situation, evaluating and assessing it properly based on these categories will help you with, uh, will help you understand the cause. Before you go into the solution to your present predicament, you need to understand and review the costs. How, why, the extent of your present condition. And that is why we, you need to understand uh, in evaluating how many of such symptoms are you experiencing. If you are experiencing perhaps five aspects in one category or for many, most of the categories, then it is perhaps a, a source of concern. And you have to understand how deep you are in such a condition. And finally, how long have you been in such a condition? Meaning if it has been there for a month, that is long enough for you to consider it seriously. And if it, is, if it has lingered for over a month, more so, you need to take action, you need to understand and, and uh, to analyze and help yourself move forward from such a condition. And so the question in now is how do we go to the next level? How do we provide a solution? Next slide, please. So we need, again, we need to review the seriousness of causes. How many? How deep and how long? And we need to be reminded, according to Proverbs 17 and verse 22, a joyful heart is a good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. So this is the condition of one who is suffering such burnout or such stressful state. It, uh, it crushes his spirit, it dries up, dries up the bones. That's why the heart is now not in good shape because it, it is not 
joyful because of the present state or condition where one is in a stressful condition. So before we go into the solution, let's understand that for us to, to go into the solution that, that is being given to us, we need to have a right knowledge of man. Understand that like what we discussed last time, man is basically body and soul. And we need to realize in order for us to have a way out, we need to realize the danger we are in considering that we are both body and soul. We discuss biblical anthrop anthropology, meaning man as he is explained or understood through the lens of scriptures. And a proper understanding of who God is helps us to come up with a proper solution to such a predicament that man often falls into in a, in a stressful condition, in an extreme stressful condition, which is in a burnout state. Understand that many problems happen not only because we do wrong, but because we believe wrong things. In other words, behind the practical problems that we experience in life, it has the, it is it has a theological uh, it has a theological problem as well. And so, this brings us to the very very foundation of how we need to solve our situation. Firstly, we need to ground ourselves in the in the understanding that. God is the creator of man. We are created according to the Genesis account, according to God's image. And God is the one who created us. But the problem is, though many people, especially believers, believe in the creation account that man was created by God, and in so doing, as creationists uh, should live according to the mandate of God, the problem is creationists live like evolutionists. And what does evolutionists believe? It tells us of the survival of the fittest. We live as though, or people, especially Christians, live as though that they are surviving in this uh, dog-eat-dog -dog, uh, world uh, culture that we have and fail to depend upon God. And so the solution that we will be studying tonight is living a grace-based life. And so the question is, how should we live a grace-based life? And so our solution is simple, but not simplistic. But it will be practical and theological. The first one we need to consider, we have five R's to look into quickly. The first R is rest, or what we call sleep. Theology. Please be reminded that sleeping is not a waste of time. Sleeping is an essential biological need of every human being. And in order for you to be encouraged uh, to give yourself the needed sleep or rest, I will show you, I will explain to you two things that we need to bear in mind. Firstly, we need to understand truth that we bear for less sleep. Next slide, please. We don't trust God if we don't sleep because God is sovereign and he has designed us to depend upon him and we need to rest. If we do not give ourselves the needed sleep on or rest, we disrespect God for sleeping is a gift from God. It is the gift of sleep is for us human beings so that we will be rested physically. Next, it is also a link between body and soul. And remember that when the body is weak, the soul suffers. And in the same way, when the soul is suffering, the body also is affected. There is a link between the sleep and the condition of our soul. And lastly, it tells us of our idolatry. It spotlights the idols. What do I mean by that? Instead of sleeping or instead of you having your sleeping time, what do you do at the end of the night? 
maybe you are still uh, you are you uh, you are still uh, surfing the internet perhaps you are playing games whether or you you are watching your favorite sports program or dealing with your work for promotion or even for ministry when such a time is designed for sleep and then you are still awake perhaps it speaks of the idolatry that you have in your heart and that is why you need you need to you are suffering in your sleep remember psalm 3 and verse 5 i lay down and slept i woke again for the lord sustained me it is god who gives us the needed rest and sleep and it is god who sustains us and that is why sleep is such a wonderful gift especially for god's people in this uh, burn out world that we live in but next I will let me give you why you need why you need to sleep all the more reasons for you to sleep. Firstly, physically, it risks your physical body if you lack sleep. There is extreme risks in your in your physical body when you deprive your bodies of the sleep it needs because chronic sleep deprivation leads to heart disease infertility stroke cancer high blood pressure and other sorts of illnesses another thing to encourage you is in in the, the realm of sports remember that those uh, athletes who excel in the sports uh, in in the sports arena in the sports arena give themselves the needed sleep in fact it, that is part of sports medicine or sports science according to Roger Federer the famous tennis player if i don't sleep 11 to 12 hours a day it's not right that is how that is how how much sleep they give their bodies to stay in shape to be able to give their best in comp competition and that also includes lebron james who sleeps 11 to 12 hours a day uh, Rafael Nadal, and even Us Usain Bolt, they need to give their bodies the needed rest in order to excel in sports competition. Another thing is on the intellectual aspect or the intellectual uh, level, brains are renewed overnight. When you give your brain the needed rest and when you sleep, you will be able to learn more. Next is emotional. Of course, when you are well rested, it will affect your enjoyment in what you do, whether in studies or in work. Next, in society, remember that major disasters like the Exxon oil spill and the Challenger Space Shuttle accident accident was caused by sleep deprivation next please and there are financial uh, issues involved according to studies uh, 63 billion per year is lost because of safety low productivity and low creativity because of sleep deprivation another is on the moral and spiritual aspect. It results to unethical behavior because it weakens your brain self-control. And that's why you fall into unethical uh, decisions and practices in your life. According to the DA Carson, sometimes the godliest thing you can do in the universe is to get a good night's sleep. And so I hope it encourages you and me to give our bodies the risk, the need, needed sleep that we need so that we can be sustained physically. It teaches, it teaches us the theology of sleep, teaches us about our Savior. It illustrates salvation, meaning for our Savior, He Himself needed rest. That's why He slept. 
it illustrates salvation meaning we are doing nothing when we are when we are asleep and it tells us that according to Matthew 11:28 come to me who labor who are who who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest but finally it also points us towards heaven because that is the ultimate rest that god's people desire and expect to have when christ comes secondly we need to recreate or what we call the body theology and neglecting the body is not right and in fact it is it is perceived by others as super spirituality First Timothy 4, uh, 4 verse 8 tells us, For while body training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. It doesn't say that you forget about bodily training or caring for your body for the sake of godliness, but you need to care for your body because others have gone to the extreme and said that, yes, soul is important, because, because it, it perpetuates and the body decays anyway, so why care for the body? But that is not right. Uh, we should not neglect the body for it is something that we need to care of. And that's why we need exercise. According to statistics, if you compare those who sit 24, 23 hours per week versus those who sit 11, 11 hours per week, those who, who sit or, or to, those who sit 11, 23 hours per week or sit 24, 23 hours per week have a greater risk of heart death by 64 percent. And another statistics statistic is that if you walk two miles a day, it reduces dementia by 60 percent or the impairment due uh, impaired ability to remember think and make decisions. So it really helps your, your body if you indulge in physical exercise. And another thing is that when you do manual work, there is something productive while getting your body in shape. When you, you, when you sweat it out, it is the grace of sweat that helps your body to be strengthened, nourished, to be fit for work. And one, someone said that someone said that sweating is good for a man, but sweating while mowing and plowing is much better than just sweating at the gym. You are doing something productive while you are getting your body in shape, and that would be a, an extra incentive. We are reminded of First Corinthians six nineteen to twenty when Paul was instructing, encouraging the Corinthian believers, uh, reminding them, and it says, or do you not know that your body is a, temp a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. So what does it tell us? We were created, redeemed, and instructed to serve God as both body and soul. So caring for our body, giving our bodies the needed exercise enables enable us to serve God as in accordance to his will and purpose as his people. The next is R. The next R is relax. It is what we call the benefit of a quieter inner and outer life or the rhythms of grace in our lives. And perhaps uh, this may sound not familiar to us. Reading and breathing are important for our relaxation. And you, may, you might say that how can reading be a relaxing when you are letting your mind work? According to studies, again, 70% of those who read say that they have an improved life. They feel good. It gives them, it helps them feel good in their life. And 
for breathing, if you breathe regularly or properly, it provides oxygen not only to your body but to your brain. And many times we deprive our bodies and our brain of the needed oxygen because of failing to properly breathe. And that's why we need to practice or improve in the way we breathe, especially when you exercise. But there is also what we call seasonal bumps or the what we call alone time. And we have to have regular breaks from the busy schedules that we have. Time to be alone, perhaps time for prayer, for meditation. Jesus himself uh, withdrew to a place to pray in Luke chapter 5 and verse 16. And here we have the text from Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. And in the next verses, verses 2 to 8, uh, the, the writer gives us around 28 items or seasons in life. And for us, we need to understand that we need to have this uh, opportunity for to be uh, to relax, to be indulged in in uh, to being alone, so that we can perhaps improve in our time with God. And the grace of peace is vital. Is vital in a grace-based life. According to Psalm 46 and verse 10, be still and know that I am God. We need to be at peace or we need to be to, to quiet ourselves in this uh, cramped up world, in this busy world that we live in so that we may experience fellowship with God. According to one uh, actor, according to Mr. Mueller, he says, if we do not allow for a rhythm of rest in our overly busy lives, illness becomes our Sabbath, our pneumonia, our cancer, our heart attack, our accidents create Sabbath for us. So would you want to wait for the time that your rest will be because of illness and sickness? And I hope not. So we need to care. We need to take care of our bodies. We need to relax. And so we come to the fourth R. Refuel. The body and the mind suffer wear and tear. And that is why it needs to be re-energized. Uh, during this time of ours in this world, uh, we have difficulty doing what First Corinthians 10.31 commands us or demands of us whether we eat or drink we need to do it do things for the glory of God because in our present world it is easy for us to know to know because of science we have much knowledge but it is hard for us to to do it glorifyingly to God because of too much temptation based on unhealthy food and drinks so we need to balance, we need to feed our bodies with the needed nutrients so that we can refuel after a day's work and labor. And let's look at the relationship between food and mind. The brain is one organ of the body that needs or that consumes 20% of oxygen. It needs 20% of carb and 50% of glucose. That is, how, how, that is how much needed nutrients the brain in order to function properly and accordingly. But also, the food we eat affects the mood. We display. And what does it say? What we eat affects how we feel. And it says, or studies show, that junk food contains fat that, ra ra uh, that raises stress level. And that is quite dangerous and alarming for, for those who love to eat such food, especially when do they do stressful eating. So we need to be watchful. And thirdly, there is what we call the feeler, feelers and drainers. If time management is important, 
energy management is much it's also important for each one of us because there is there are those who drain you fast and there are those activities that fills fills uh, you quickly and perhaps to give you an idea what this is all about perhaps as a filler fillers on uh, fillers for you might be prayer bible reading or reading good books perhaps family time or a time uh, in the gym good food gratitude laughter perhaps good movies close friends sports but for drainers this sucks up the energy in us perhaps these are what we have daily meetings classes conflict criticisms fear and anxiety business over commitment perhaps for student studies negativity socializing late nights lectures and so on and so forth but understand that we have different fillers and drainers because we are uh, we are made of different composition we may we may not, we might not share the same fillers and drainers but no because no one is alike no two are alike so we need to replenish our energy because we are finite creatures and in order for us to replenish we if possible we need to keep the drainers to a very to a minimum controlling it but we need to so that's why we need to have fillers we should not feel guilty of engaging in inactivities to fill our tank so that we can go on doing our work go on with our studies go on serving god so in this aspect we need good nutrition and we also need energizing activities to sustain us and for us to plug the holes when needed and finally relate the last r man was created by god as a relational being we were created not to be alone according to genesis 2:18 when he created adam it was not he saw that it was not right for adam to be alone that's why he provided for a companion in eve and so we we need to understand three basic uh, relationships that we need to nurture the most important of all is with god it requires much energy and time and in order to pursue it we need to guard our time we need to provide such important time we need in order to have that uh flourishing relationship with god through our prayer through our meditation and we have to have undistracted mind for us to concentrate and in order to feed our soul we need to read christ centered books and perhaps we need to indulge in selfish reading to feed our soul these are some of the things that we need to pursue in order to strengthen strengthen our relationship with god because this is the most important relationship that we need to nurture next to our next to other relationships that we need to pursue next is with our family for 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 the family it means uh for the fathers with the kids or for the parents with the kids for fathers with their wives and for students with your family members your parents and with your siblings and according to statistics 30% of students feel homesickness but the severe homesickness are experienced by freshmen in college and that is why uh, this explains why why we need to nurture relationship because we are made to be relational beings as designed by god and so and finally we need to grow with a relationship develop relationship with friends we need to prioritize cultivate build unselfish friendship rather than isolate we were not created to be alone we need to nurture those friendships in school 
in our communities, with our families, and in church. But sadly, but sadly, this is where where men fail badly, because men are too busy, selfish, functional, proud, superficial, and even brainwashed in the way they perceive friendship. When you speak of they are too busy, they think of friendship as a waste of time because it takes much time to, to nurture relationship or friendship. They are selfish because perhaps they look at what uh, they have that idea or mindset was, what's in it for me? And usually when you speak of functional, men's friendship are, are out of organizations, maybe because of work or because of sports involvement. And men are too proud. It is just for whims. If you are uh, weak, if you are less self-confident, then you need friendship. But for, for the strong, you don't need one. And uh, when you speak of superficial, they don't want to let your guard down. But sadly, because of TV and Hollywood experience or, or in influence, men's uh, idea of friendship have been, has been brainwashed. One said, real man is strong and stoic. He doesn't show emotion other than anger and excitement. And I hope that should not be the case. It should remind us to consciously cultivate and nurture healthy and satisfying relationships in life. That is one way for us to help ourselves in the stresses of life. Relationships should build us. And to conclude this short talk, let us be reminded that in order for us to, to lead a grace-based life, let us remember that life is not a sprint but it is a long distance run. And uh, 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 should tell us, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. This is what Paul concluded or said to Timothy in conclusion of his life. It was a life fought for God's glory to serve the cause of Christ. And that is why the challenge for us is not to be burned out, but rather to, uh, to be burned right. Or better still, we should be burning bright if you are a believer, if you are a Christian, because you should not uh, fall into the problem of our culture, which is a burnout culture wherein God's people are suffering in severe stress because of their failure to learn and understand what the word of God says for them to do. So again, we need the rest. We need to recreate, meaning the physical exercise. We need to relax. Time for relaxation. We need to refuel, feed our bodies with the needed food. And we need to re-energize. And finally, we need to relate, grow in our relationships. Uh, develop uh, friendships, cultivate and nurture healthy, satisfying relationships in life. Because after all, if we will not do these things, it would be easy for us to be in a stressful condition or situation and be burned out. So that ends my talk for tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much for your talk, Deacon Jun. We'll now move to our Q&A portion, but just a few reminders first. Please keep your questions short and to the point so that we can have more time, as many questions as possible. Please avoid asking questions regarding very specific cases that might involve sharing private information. And for live questions, please use Zoom's raise hand function to be acknowledged by me, your moderator, or send them through the Zoom chat or privately to our RCM Zoom host, uh, Brother Ian Camacho, or to Sister Dara Barile. Those joining via FB Live may ask questions by sending them in the comment section of the FB Live or by sending a private message to the RCM FB page. Your questions will be forwarded to the speaker as time permits. And now for our uh, Q&A part, for our first question, 
this uh, question pertains more in the academic uh, field. How to best respond for a student when told, ang tulog ay nababawi pero ang grades ay hindi? Well, uh, I understand. In fact, exams and the pursuit of good grades is one of the stressors for students in their desire to excel. But there will be those occasions. Uh, let me uh, remind or caution that this, this is the kind of life which the Word of God is uh, what we call, what the author says, grace-based life that we need to live on a normal pace. But there will be those occasions that you need to, uh, perhaps you need to deprive yourself of sufficient rest or sleep because of exams, studies, and other requirements. But it should not be the normal, the usual time that you will be spending, that you will be depriving your bodies of sleep as what we discussed a while ago. And yes, uh, it is a good pursuit, but at the same time, let me caution. Uh, grades, uh, of course, grade is one area where we, you can determine the level of achievement of a student, but it is not the be all and end all. If you give yourself, if you develop patterns of studies so that you will not need to cram yourself and deprive yourself of the sleep, then that would be much better. And that's why we, you need to look into the routines that you do in your studies, not only in your studies, but even in our, in our work, so that we will not deprive our, our bodies or ourselves of the needed rest. And that is the whole point of a grace-based life. But again, there will be occasions that situations may not warrant such. But we should go back to the normal pace or, the, or to the kind of pace which should enable us to live longer fruitful lives, fruitful lives for the glory of God and for greater service for the kingdom. Thank you very much for your answer, Deacon Jun. And to our second question, while it is true that a believer is genuine about their ministries, but is over committing unconsciously and burnout is evident to brethren, most likely because also of vocation aside from church ministries, how can this mindset be corrected? Uh, can you please repeat the, the first part? Yeah. While I, I, it is true that while it is true that a believer is genuine about their ministries, but is overcommitting unconsciously and burnout is evident to brethren, uh, ma, most likely the reason is this this person thinks that having too many things to do and is very a very good thing to to in glorify, glorifying the Lord. How can this mindset be corrected when it is already burnt out? Yeah, like. Like uh, initially, we will look into the evaluation aspect. You have to check uh, this evaluation aspect is part of your usual check or the usual check up uh, period of in your life where you will look into warning signs or warning lights where you are headed towards such a burnout uh, condition, and it and. It is not only your responsibility, but at times, brethren, people close to you should have that, should have that uh, desire to also understand where you are and perhaps counsel you, help you. Because uh, human as we are, frail, weak, even our hearts can deceive us. We might have that desire to labor and be of use in various aspects of ministry, but who knows our heart? Uh, it might be, uh, I hope that it will, it will be for God's glory rather than for self-glory. Our hearts are deceitful. But again, uh, this mechanism helps you to slow down and to set a proper pace so that you will be more fruitful and th there will be more joy in laboring for the cause of Christ because of your involvement according to the gifts and the graces that you are uh, provided for by God in your life. 
Thank you for answering that question, Dikunjun. Uh, for our third question, what advice can you give in approaching unbelievers that are prone to burnouts about the mentioned theological solutions? Well, if, if you are ministering to be unbelievers, if you are a, for a believer, this is an opportunity for you to minister the gospel. And perhaps, and perhaps this truth that we discussed tonight, or, this, or starting with the evaluation and the solution, can help you minister by explaining the condition of that person and relating it to what the Word of God says after all. It is an opportunity for you to share the truth of the gospel because the word of God, like uh, what, which, which is the basis of our discussion, the five R's as uh, solutions, can help you bring the truth of scriptures as a means to, uh, uh, to speak to the soul of an unbeliever. If the word of God can... Uh, can provide answers to the various needs of the body, how much more for the soul, which is the most important part of the human being. A lost soul will, will languish in hell. But when you, uh, and when you expose the depravity of that soul or the misery of that soul apart from uh, the gospel, then, you are in a better position to help out that person, not only, not only uh, for the salvation of that soul, but for him or her to overcome uh, excessive stress or burnout, which many experience in various areas or various aspects of our life. Thank you for that answer, Deacon Jun. Uh, for our next question, what can you say about believers who shy away from involving themselves in ministries with the reason that they do not want additional duties to avoid burnout? Uh, we are made we are made differently, and uh, but without using whatever gifts and abilities God has given you, it's it's a cop out or it's a misunderstanding. Of your role but if you are serving according to your capacity according to the time that is that uh, that you have available while pursuing your vocation in life if you're a student or if you're working then it is a, a good start but without any involvement perhaps is something that you need to ask yourself what gift what graces do i have that I can contribute to help out or to extend help in the ministry of the church. There must be something that you can do. And uninvolvement is a, a sad reality. Uh, it might be a lack of concern uh, for souls or for the good of brethren that you are not involved in yourself. And you have to take that step. It is easy for us to excuse ourselves. Because we are so busy with the mundane things. But we, we need to remind ourselves that doing whatever vocation we, we have now, like studying and work, there are other things that we can possibly do as God has equipped and gifted us. So you need to have that, you need to have that, uh, that, that mindset, that attitude, that concern for the kingdom. Because uh, you are there for a purpose. And there is a reason why you are a part of God's community. And I do believe if you would just think deeper, uh, go out of your shell, go out of your comfort zone, and have that uh, willingness and desire to serve God for his kingdom, there is something that you can do. Uh, to, uh, to, you can labor for for the cause of Christ. Thank you for that answer, Dikunjun. And another question here for you. One can be passive about burnout and not identify their situation. How can such a person, person reset their attitude of overworking or studying when he or she has become habitually dependent on it? Yeah, uh, 
And that's why we, we need to, we, we are studying this because there are those who fail to understand the situation. I mean, uh, you have been carried by the culture around you for whatever reason, the influence. No, excellence is different from uh, just pursuing uh, yourself and killing yourself in pursuing the demands of, the, of this world. Remember, uh, that is the culture, uh, the burnout culture of this world. Work, work, work without the needed rest. So that's why a while ago, I, we discussed about uh, relaxation. There, there should be seasons where we need to rest. Weekly, there's the Sabbath rest for our bodies. Maybe you need to have a vacation on a regular basis, quarterly or annual, to recharge, to re-energize. And it is important because we are not made of steel or even robots malfunction. How much more weak? Uh, earthen vessels, weak, frail, vessels tarnished or, or affected by sin. We, and if you are aging, the more so, you need to slow down because you are not the young man you used to be when you when you you were full of energy during your teenage years, and and uh, the warning, like what I've said a while ago, the rest might be when you are ill, when you are sick, because God will put you in such a such a situation so that you will remember that you need rest, and many times it happens for those who are extreme workaholics that they forget rest because we need to remind ourselves that God has other people in his kingdom who can do the labor, do the work. But for us to serve more for longevity, we need to learn how to pace our life. And this is the story of the author of the book. God warned him to various illnesses and sickness because it is easy for us to justify that I need to do this because I'm the only one capable of doing this or I need to do this because it is important for ministry, for work, for whatever reason. But God has also other servants and you have a responsibility to care for your body so that you will be useful for the long run. Thank you for that answer. And now we have remaining questions. Pa rin po. Uh, after a period of burnout, there is a tendency for self isolation due to overrest, overrest or overspending time for self. In what ways can we approach a per, the person to encourage coming back to work or study? Uh, slowly. It will not be easy for that person perhaps to, uh, to overcome uh, that burnout state and slowly go back to the normal pace of life. But we, that person needs encouragement. Uh, you have to be there, praying with him, uh, guiding, nurturing, and helping him in practical ways, hit him or her in practical ways to lift him up, lift him up. And of course, we need, more importantly, the Word of God to uh, enable us to see rightly what needs to be done before us. And uh, of course, after they're physically being drained, uh, you need to recharge. And after once you, you are recharged, then you can, uh, you can again pursue what you, you need to be pursuing, what you should be pursuing in your in your studies, in your career, in whatever vocation you are doing. And that's the, ex the example we uh, discussed or, uh, yeah, we discussed last week regarding Elijah. And he was ministered to both physically as well as spiritually. And he was up and about for the, for the task given to him by God. So he served God even to the end of his life for God's glory. Thank you for that answer. Uh, for our next question, would the proportional percentage of the five hours rest, recreate, refuel, rejuvenize, uh, 
energized relate very, very with individuals. Uh, can you give any minimum uh, acceptable or advisable percentage for each category, category to balance each? Uh, no, you need all of it. Meaning, how can you, for example, the last uh, R we discussed, relate or pursuing relationship. If you are not rested, if you are not physically fit, you're not energized and your body is not physically fit, then you cannot have that energy to pursue friendship, relationships as such. So you need to have, you need to have all, all of this. And like what I've said, we are made differently. No two persons are made exactly the same. So you just have to understand the principle, the rest that you need. If you sleep less than five hours, according to a one person, he, is, he feels like he's a zombie. If he sleeps less than five hours, he's useless. So we need the needed rest that we have. If you, if you are pursuing it, on a regular basis, then you are good at it. I mean, you're, you're better off. And if you indulge in a little uh, a regular exercise, it will keep the oxygen level of your brain and your body fit. And if you will have that relaxation period once in a while, it will feed your soul and you will, uh, you will be recharged and energized when necessary on a regular basis. And of course, when you have developed friendships, nurture relationship as we are supposed to do, then it is a good balance of the kind of life that God desires for his people, which the author says is grace-based life for a believer. Thank you for that answer. Uh, now, moving on to our last question. Does the Bible teach anything about romanticizing sleep deprivation? Well, we need the rest. We, do, we don't need to, rom to romanticize it. Uh, but as, as human frail, be, uh, as frail beings or creatures of, of created by God, we need to give the needed rest that we are told uh, because failure to do so would have devastating effect on our health. And I, and even I myself feel, I can feel that, especially in uh, when you are aging. For the young, perhaps it is easy for you to recover. And that's why you can say, oh, I can deal with some sleepless nights for whatever reason, for, for, the, for, for the sake of unprofitable things. But in the long run, failure to do so, now we, you will not only be sinning in failing to uh, give yourself the need to dress, but it will have a devastating effect in your physical body. And there will always be consequences for our wrong decisions. Thank you again for answering the questions, Lee Kun Jun. And that that concludes our uh, two-part series. And so we, again, are reminded to balance uh, rest and work or study. And in so, in, in so doing, we must remember also that God has uh, told us to take care of our health because he, he, we all, he also created us in his image. 